Hey, this is, hi. <laughs> this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches. And um, this is Bubbles. If you're um, familiar with my cat, Jupiter, this would be really the first time that you're meeting Bubbles. Um, and I sell occasionally a, a lovely trained dog and this is one that I've been working with. And um, yeah, we'll be selling her uh, to a lovely family as an emotional support dog. She's just a, a lovely little creature. And well, I'm sure she's gonna be a little distracting. So <laughs> look at that face, a lot prettier than mine. And at some point she may have to go into her little crate where she can play with her toys. And I can carry on the business of this video, which is going to be about a concept that's very elusive, very troubling. It's, um, is it a myth? Is it a legend or is it real? And what I'm talking about is the concept of horological nirvana. Horological contentment doesn't really exist. And before we explore the meat and potatoes of this legend, of this myth, of this shibboleth, let's do a quick fist watch check. But I'm gonna do it with a tiny little Pomeranian in my arms. And here it is. What do you think, Bubbles? You like it? What do you think? That is a sky dweller. Okay, so here's the agenda for this video. Um, I'm going to blab a little while and then I will cut the live video and I will show you the watches in my collection that have me feeling so good. All right, so I think after I got the sky dweller is when this all started to occur. What's the problem? The problem is, is that each of us takes a long and unique individual journey into the topic of watch collecting. And if you're lucky, at some point you hit this you hit this this place, you hit the peak, you climb Mount Everest. Now Everest is going to be different for every one of us, right? So some of us are deep into the Seikos or Oris or micro brands or Breitling. I don't mean to just like rattle off a bunch of brand names, but the fact of the matter is, is that wherever you are in horology, there's going to be something specific that's going to strike your fancy. And it might be a brand or it might be chronographs. You know, you might want chronographs of all different brands. In my case, I, what I really thought was that I was a diver guy and that I wanted divers from every genre. And then, or I mean, you know, like from a lot of brands, then I thought it might be chronographs and then GMTs. And it turns out having been through a lot of watches buying and selling, I feel that really the, the two genres that I most like would be GMT or time zone watches, <laughs> Hi. along with, uh, God, she's so cute, along with um, dive watches. These are the two things that I like. And um, I especially like if they have a bezel and so much the better if it spins. So, but, but boy, you know, it has been a long sort of difficult journey for me in the sense that, well, I had to make a lot of mistakes. I had to buy things that I thought I would like that I didn't. I bought things to sometimes to impress other collectors. Sometimes I bought things just to scratch the itch, you know, because the price point was like easy enough for me to just go, okay. And um, it has taken me quite a while to realize something that you may know about me um, already, and that is I'm just an unapologetic Rolex fanboy, <laughs> you know, provided that we're talking about the Rolex watches with rare exception that are 40, over 40 millimeters. You know, those are the ones that I particularly like. Now, your journey might be entirely different. You might hate those 40 millimeter Rolex watches and you might be like Doc, Dr. BBW who just um, loves vintage chronographs, as an example. Or you might be like my, my friend Hisham Habib who likes almost everything in Rolex. Or you might be like the rancher and you honestly don't care what the brand is as much as you love Rolex, but you're willing to go to other brands provided the price is right. You know, like maybe you're a value-driven buyer and you just, you love the thrill of the hunt, which by the way, is a lot like me. Um, I have spent the last several years in hunt mode, right? Constantly uh, with the adrenaline rush of what do I want next? What can I do? How can I trap it? How can I buy this cheaper? And I've gotten, you know, like some lovely deals like this Sky Dweller, I, it, it lists for $17,000 and plus tax. So for me, this would have been over an $18,000 watch to purchase it locally. And instead I got it for $14,000. Stop barking. Um, for, I got it for $14,000, like right out of the, you know, right. She's, 
I'm gonna put her away. She's decided there's a mystery person in the house. Look at you being all protective. Say hi to the people. You know, uh, okay, so Bubbles, <laughs> Bubbles has gone to play with her toys. But you know, when you think about it, we all have a different journey that we're on, but an enormous amount of the journey revolves around acquisition, hunting, buying, researching, um, a lot more time. Think about it. How much time do you sit staring at a watch, actually enjoying, appreciating, touching, fondling, you know, literally looking at the watch? How much time do you spend doing that versus you get the one that you want, that box is checked off, and the next thing you know, you're, you're on to the next one. You're watching videos, you're looking at eBay, you're you know, obsessing over Chrono 24, you're in and out of watch recon, you're spending a lot of time um, on, in, the, in the watch forums on Facebook. I mean, guys, if this sounds a little bit like you, well, it's an awful lot like me. It's kind of like you're walking up the stairs to get to the torch you know, in, in the Statue of Liberty, or you're trying to get up the steps to the top of the Eiffel Tower. And I'm at this place where I don't know, have I reached my personal pinnacle, you know? Have I climbed my version, the Mark Goldberg version of Mount Everest? Have I done that? Or am I just at base camp number one, you know? Is this feeling of contentment, like I, there's nothing that I want? Do I have everything that I could want? Feel like I might I feel like I do at this point but is that a false sense of security will I be overcome by the need you know for the adrenaline rush so will all this messing around I do on YouTube looking at other people's videos will all this watch recon will all this eBay give me the the, the desire well all of a sudden I wake up one morning and decide I have to have a Hulk but only if I can get it for a crazy good price this has been so much of my life for a long time and it's really the reason why I call this vlog is it an illness or is it a hobby um, you know because I think it's a little bit of both is horological contentment possible is watch nirvana a thing bear in mind by the way that the Dalai Lama owns a Rolex collection <laughs> you know which is really you know uh, if you don't believe me, Google it. But I, so I think I'm asking a legitimate question. Has the Dalai Lama of all people hit horological nirvana, you know, or is he, or, or is he, you know, in his adopted country, you know, swiping through eBay and <laughs> I don't know how it works for him, but I know how it works for me and how it works for me has been a little troubling. And that is the hunt has been more satisfying long term than the kill. Okay, I should be staring at this watch all day long, appreciating all the various little interesting facets of it. You know, and to a certain extent I do, but then uh, quite frankly what happens is short attention span theater, you know, kicks in. I get bored and then I gotta rotate to another watch. Now that being said, I'm a lot more, I enjoy the Rolex line a lot more than anything else. Um, there's only one watch in Patek that I like. I think it's reference number 5525, which is the pilot, which is the pilot travel watch. So if I've got the reference wrong, forgive me for that, but it's a beautiful watch, but it's $50,000. And I'm just gonna say that's not in my price range. Maybe if I sold like everything else, then you know that could be the one true watch but it's only in precious metal so I don't know about you but this is not my economic bracket I am not gonna walk around in a fifty thousand dollar watch and have it be the one and only watch you know yeah so basically I think Patek is off the shelf for me I know you can get a Calatrava for like a third of that but you know I'm not gonna it doesn't appeal to me I, I like sports watches not dress watches I like big watches not small watches I like kind of thicker watches not skinny watches yeah, so I think I think Rolex is really the brand that appeals. Now, I know in the comments I'm going to get a lot of, you know what you should get? You should get a Royal Oak. Um, or you know what you should get? You should get a Langa. And you can, I do want you to discuss this with me in the comments. And you're welcome to tell me what you think I should get or what you think I should do. But remember that to a large extent, this is a really personal journey. And... Um, when people say to me, what kind of watch should I buy? What brand, what model? I don't just tell them what I think because if I do that, I'll simply be telling them what I like. And, and when I get asked questions like that, 
What should I buy? I want to talk to that person a whole lot about what's their age, what's their lifestyle, what's their dress style, what other watches do they have, what are what the, what are their aspirations, what do they do for hobbies, so I can kind of you know point them towards their own personal horological nirvana because it's going to be very different than mine. So um, we're going to cut this in a moment. We're going to look at the watches that have made me so happy, but concurrently they worry me because now I have everything. Boy, I kind of hope that uh, at Basel World Rolex will introduce some new stuff that piques my curiosity. I mean, I'm sure they will update some stuff. Like I, I think that the uh, the whole GMT line is going to get rejiggered with the new movement. So I think they'll change reference numbers. I don't think they'll discontinue the black, black, black. I, but I think they'll give it a new reference number and a new movement because they have a 70 hour power reserve. But I don't think much else is going to change. So um, and I have a Batman, at, which weirdly is one of the watches in my collection that has me at this point of of um, of horological nirvana or at base camp number one you know I guess I'll know in another you know six or eight months if I haven't budged if I haven't budged uh, okay so let me tell you my last worry my last worry is that because I've got everything in Rolex that I really do like that I'll start missing the adrenaline rush of the hunt and of the thrill and either I'll start buying Rolexes in the 40 millimeter range which I'm like not as crazy about like a Submariner Black or a Hulk um, you know st stuff in, in that range and if I do that will I really actually be happy with them or will I just end up sorry that I spent the money and end up wanting to flip out of them or will I stay with my 42 millimeter and above you know, and um, and will I go get an Omega? You know, the, there's a new Omega Seamaster with the display case back. It's 42 millimeters, the laser engraved dial. Looks really great, actually. And there's a there's an authorized dealer. My Rolex dealer has Omega, so I should stop up there and try one of those on. You know, but will I be happy with an Omega when I'm really a Rolex guy? Should I be shooting up? Should I be shooting down? Or should I just be content, you know, with where I am? Anyway, uh, thanks for uh, going along with me on all this crazy stuff. I'm sure you're having some crazy of your own. Let's take a look at the core of my watch collection that has me thinking I might have just peaked Mount Everest. And then let's talk about all of this in the comments. I will be in there with you. And please like and subscribe and do all that for me. Well, here you're taking a look at what I would call the big five in my collection. Um, the 40 millimeter pre-ceramic sea dweller is in the upper left hand side and we can kind of rule that out that's not so much in the running although it's a nice watch i'm going to sell it the batman is the only 40 millimeter that i have that i really love and next to it uh, is the 42 millimeter polar explorer i had the 40 millimeter version of the polar explorer but i flipped it because it was too little and flimsy now we've got the sky dweller and next to that the redline sea dweller and next to that, and that's uh, 42 millimeters, both of those. And then we have the 44 millimeter monster, which is the uh, James Cameron Deep Sea. That is, uh, although it's only 44 millimeters, it's super thick. So it's just a, it's a big, tough, hard wearing watch. So again, that take that upper left hand uh, little pre-ceramic sea dweller out of the mix. And what we're looking at here is really the heart and soul of the big five. The five Rolexes that I love, I think there's nothing else that I love. There's a 44 millimeter Yacht Master that I could live without. So I think I might have peaked. What do you think, guys? Am I done? Have I hit horological nirvana? Just like the Dalai Lama, have I found contentment here on Earth? Or am I just at a plateau? Am I at base camp number one? And the madness is about to start all over again. And if so, where's it gonna go? Hopefully you'll come along with me on this journey. Stay tuned. Let's do this one together. This is Goldberg. Peace out.